In a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of the many fine programs brought to you Sundays on NBC. Later this evening, listen to the NBC Star Playhouse with two of your favorite stars. Hear Stroke of Fate and the story of what might have happened if fate had reversed historical facts. And be sure to keep tuned for the dramatic story of Last Man Out. It's a wonderful lineup of great programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. Of thy sin, Desdemona, or indeed thou art to die. My lord of the law, have mercy on me. I say amen. And you, mercy too. I never did offend you in my life. Oh, pardon, woman. Oh. Say, say I speak the truth. I never did offend. You're offending us, lady. <laughs> hey, who is this guy Shakespeare anyway? <laughs> oh, oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Don't, trumpet. Kill me tomorrow, but let me live tonight. Please say kill her tonight. Yeah, yeah, let's get it over with. Hey, nay. The lady, if you stray... But half an hour. Holy mackerel, not another half hour then. <laughs> Go on, Otello. Put her out of her misery. Well, how about our misery? <laughs> ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. He said me don't mean us. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It appears... But our thespian efforts do not meet with your approval. Appears? <laughs> My company and I have played before all the crowned heads of Europe. We thought the enlightened community of Virtue City would welcome an opportunity to witness the works of the immortal bard as performed by Madame de la Seine, the distinguished French actress, and by your humble servant. <laughs> we were mistaken... To err is human, to forgive divine. I forgive you. The performance is concluded. Good night. Hey, hey now, just a minute. You mean you ain't going on to the end of this thing? You have understood me correctly, sir. Ooh. What's Shakespeare going to think? Yeah, what about the money we paid? Do we get it back? What about... Silence! Silence, please! My company has more than earned a meager pittance. You ain't done nothing until the show's over. That's right. Either you finish up your acting up there, you give us our dough. Right. This ultimatum is outrageous. I reject it flatly. Just you stay up there on that stage, mister. I... I said... Please, please, sir, sir, please, there are ladies present. Someone might be injured. You going on with the show, ain't you? Well? Uh... Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, performance will continue. Yeah. But under protest, sir, under severe protest. I hadn't been back to Virtue City since the second silver strike. The first mines played out all 10, 15 years ago, and the town had been crumbling away like a stale loaf of bread. But the new, new strike last spring, oh, that, that for the looks of things, is even bigger than the first one. The old stores all opened up again, and half a dozen new ones being built. The new railroad accounted for some of the prosperity. Anyway, that's the way, that's why I'd come to town. I 
I was supposed to meet the train from Chicago and pick up some spare parts for the pump at the Round Y Ranch where I was working. The train wasn't due until the next day, so I headed over to the hotel to see about getting a room. The clerk was sitting behind the registration counter looking through some kind of a contraption. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. Sure, I'd never seen a gadget like that before. Yeah. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, I... oh, oh uh, sorry, mister. Didn't know you was there. Well, I, I'd I like just to... got me a new set of pictures. I was sort of anxious to try them out, you know. Pictures? What? Uh, my stereoscope. Oh. oh. Uh, why, you, you, you've seen a stereoscope before, ain't you, mister? No, no, can't say that. <laughs> why, it's the newest thing. All the folks back east have got them. Here, j- just let me show you, huh? Now, nah, you wait a minute. Just wait till I find Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Now, you just look through the front end there, huh? That's right. That's right. Well. Well. No, I'll be doggone. Why, uh, Why, it just looks like that water come right at you, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> why, you just, you'd think it was real. <laughs> you, you'd think you were right there. Huh? <laughs> here, here, yeah. just, just, let me show you another one, huh? Now, let me see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pyramids. Pyramid. I'm the only fellow in town who got the pyramids. The pyramids? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're in Egypt, you know. Yeah. Huh? There. Now, how's that? Why, just look at... Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> I, well, that's, well, that fellow's standing out in front of the pyramids. Uh, you, it's just like you could touch him. <laughs> you could just reach out and touch him. <laughs> I've I, I, I never seen anything like that before my life. Yeah, you just wait till I find that redskin to shoot in an arrow. Well, got a way he's aiming it. Well, if you didn't know it was a picture, you'd swear you were looking at the... key, if you please. Oh, oh, sure, Mr. Plunkett, sure, sure. And you may as well have my bill ready. We'll be checking out this afternoon. Oh, thought you were supposed to give another show tonight. The uh, <coughs> performance has been canceled. Hey. Hey, Arch. Hey, beg your pardon, sir? Arch, well, you, don't you remember me? You seem to have the advantage, sir. I don't believe that I... Britt! Brit, punts it. Well, what the thunder are you doing in Virtue City, Arch? Why, I haven't seen you since... Since, since last... our triumphal tour of Texas, wasn't it, Brit? Why? When we were the honored guests of the governor, my company and I. You remember he insisted that we stay at the executive mansion? Uh, now, Arch. I, I, I shall I... never forget the warmth of our reception there. The people of Texas have a true appreciation of the art of the drama, unlike some of our more recent audiences. Audiences? Well, come along, old boy. Come along. You must join us for a spot of tea. Marguerite would be so delighted to see you again. Marguerite? Who's she? My lovely wife. Oh. Don't tell me you've forgotten her. Well, I... Well, no, I thought, I thought her name We've was... We've uh, taken the pre- presidential suite, of course. If you'll just follow me... Well, now, hold on, Arch. I, I've, I've got to see about a room for myself. Oh, I... Nonsense, nonsense. The clerk will take care of these trivial details. This way, dear boy. This way. Ah, here we are, my dear Brit. Enter. Hey, what, what the Sam Hills happened to you, Arch? What, what happened to your voice? You, you, you <laughs> All in good of... time, my good man. All in good time. Marguerite? That's you, Arch? Yes, my dear. I've brought someone with me. Oh, uh, I have uh, been, um, how you say, uh, taking a little nap to snooze, you know. Well, Brad! Why, you son of a gun, what? Well, where did you come from? Oh, Maggie, how are you? <laughs> he was downstairs in the lobby, Mag. I had to get him up here fast before he spilled the beans. Oh, that's right. You don't know we're in the profession, do you, Brad? The what? Show business, Brett. Show business. Maggie and I are actors now. We got our own company. No. <laughs> Permit me to introduce myself. Archibald Plunkett, late of London, Paris, New York, and for an unpleasant moment, Virtue City. Plunkett, eh? <laughs> Couldn't keep on calling myself Archie Plunkett. Once I gave up the dry goods emporium and started acting. Oh, I see. And uh, this charming lady is my wife, the toast of the continent, Marguerite de la Seine. What do you mean you changed your name too, Maggie? Oh, just fancied it up a speck. I-, I used to be Maggie Rivers before I married Arch. Well, we looked on a map. There's a French river called the Seine, so, uh... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, just don't seem fair somehow. <laughs> what do you mean, Brett? Well, all your folks give you a hand. All seems like you ought to stick with us. Oh, uh-huh. not when you're in the profession. Is that so? Sure, most actors have to change their name. They do? Yeah, uh-huh. lots of them. Well, I-, I-, I guess if it's customary, I... 
Gee whiz, you're actors now, huh? Well, Arch wasn't much good at business, Britt. You know that. He always hated to stay in one place. And then when the drought hit, well, we were cleaned out. Yeah, it was right about then Doc Ryder comes through with his medicine show. Remember the Doc, Britt? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. And his guitar player left him flat. Run off with that girl he used to do the singing, the one with the yellow tights. Yellow tights? I don't think... Oh. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah so the Doc yeah. needed somebody to take their place, and, well, Maggie always had a real sweet singing voice, and seen as how we were broke anyhow. Doggone tights never did fit me. Well, you're not still with the medicine show, are you? Oh, we sure ain't. Anyhow, we struck out on our own, started in doing serious acting. You know, Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Oh. To be or not to be, that oh, is the I, question. I see. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take up arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing. That's pretty good. And then that's Hamlet. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's... <laughs> to tell you the truth, brother, I was going to appear as the melancholy dame this very evening. That circumstances have compelled us to abandon the production. Is that so? Yeah, there was a little trouble during our performance of Othello last night. Mm, you mean the folks didn't like the show? Well, when they started shooting up at the ceiling, that was the impression that we got. Well, now they shouldn't have done that. I couldn't agree with you more completely. Anyway, we're going on to Rocky Falls... Maybe folks there will have a little more... Oh, who on earth? Right, now you won't say anything. You won't give us away. Oh, no, no, of course not. Your servant, sir? Forgive me for intruding. Are you Archibald Plunkett, the actor? I am he. Delighted to meet you, Mr. Plunkett. And uh, what may I do for you, sir? I happen to be spending the day in Virtue City, and I saw a theatrical poster advertising a performance of Hamlet, one of my favorite plays. Unfortunately, when I tried to buy tickets, I was informed that your company isn't appearing this evening. That is uh, correct, sir. Uh, a sudden change in our schedule. We have so many engagements, we're unable to fill them all. Oh, I understand, Mr. Punkett. I understand. The vagaries of show business. <laughs> See, I happen to be in the theater myself. Indeed? Uh, my card. No, oh, thank you. I'm sorry I won't have the opportunity of witnessing your performance. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Old faker. Why, I bet he's no more in show business than you are, Briss. Probably thought we'd give him a couple of free passes. Oh. What? Oh, what? no. Oh, Arch, what's the matter? Oh, no, no, no. It, it, it couldn't. I, I've seen things. Britt. Hmm? Here, Britt, what's it look like to you? The name on this card. What's it say? Oh, I, uh, I'll say it. It says Barnum. P.T. Barnum. Yeah, that's the name, all right. Printing's real clear. We'll return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in just a moment. Now, during the holiday season, with more cars than usual on the road and adverse weather conditions, think a minute. If a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, could you stop in time to save a life? As always, during a holiday season, you must be more alert than ever in following simple safety rules. Keep your windshield clear of fog and snow. Be certain your headlights and wipers are working properly. In wet weather, never slam on your brakes. It's a sure way to put your car into a skid. And always follow other cars at a safe distance. Don't be one of those unfortunates who will lose his life in a traffic accident this Yuletide. Be careful, friends. Live to have a safe and happy Christmas. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. next couple of minutes or two, Arch and Maggie just stood there looking at each other. And the way they were looking at each other, I tell you, it, it was the same kind of an expression a calf gets just before you hit him with a branding iron. And then Arch walked over to the window and raised it up just like he was getting ready to jump out. I thought, sure, Maggie would stop him. She didn't. All she did was just grabbed the calling card out of my hand, started rubbing her finger over the printing on it. Arch, it's real engraven. 
Yeah. Why can't I do it, Maggie? Why can't I end it all right... Right here and now. Oh, now, what are you talking about, Archer? What's got into you folks, anyhow? P.T. Barnum, Brett. You know who P.T. Barnum is, don't you? Well, he said he was in show business. He in show business? He is show business. Jenny Lynn, General Tom Thumb, half the stars in America owe their careers to him. Yeah? Don't you see, Brett? He was going to come to the theater tonight. He was going to watch his act with, without us even asking him. Well, but... And if he liked us, well, there's no telling what would have happened. He might have hired us himself. An actor gets a chance like this only once. To appear before... P.T. Barnum. Arch? Arch, maybe it's not too late. It is too late. No, listen now. Now, now the company is still in town. All we have to do is unpack the costumes. The performance has been canceled, Maggie. Then we'll uncancel it. I- I'll round up the rest of the cast. Uh, change your train tickets. Sure, that's it. And and you, you get over to the opera house. Make sure they, they haven't let it out to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, no. No, no, what about an audience? Oh, yeah, some... Well, I tell you, give some of the kids around town passes. They'll spread the word quick enough. Well, now, just don't stand there, Arch. Get moving. Oh, all right, Maggie. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all right. All right. <coughs> well, uh, Maggie, I guess uh, I'm... Britt, now, now you go and find Mr. Barnum. What? He must be staying in the hotel. The clerk will give you the room number. Well, I... Uh, tell him we rearranged our schedule again. We're playing Hamlet tonight. But for heaven's sakes, don't let him know it's because of him. Oh? Uh-huh. And, and tell him tell him he won't need tickets. We're saving him the front box. Well, hurry up, Britt. Hurry up. Before I make some other plans. All right, sure, sure. All right, Maggie. <laughs> Mr. Barnum? Yes. Oh, hello there. Howdy. My name's Britt Ponsett. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Ponsett. What can I do for you? Well, my friends, the Plunkets, the, uh, the uh, Plunkettes, they uh, asked me to find you. Oh? And uh, they've, they've sort of changed their plans. It seems they're, they're going to stay over in Virtue City tonight and uh, give the show. Oh, I see. And they asked me to tell you that they're saving a box for you. If you'd care to use it tonight. That's very considerate, Mr. Ponsett. I'd be delighted. Are you with the company? How's that? Are you one of the performers I'm to have the pleasure of watching tonight? Uh, oh, no. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm just a friend. Oh. Well, thank you for delivering the message. Don't mention it, Mr. Barnum. Uh, don't mention it. Well, I didn't see any more of Arch and Maggie that afternoon. I figured they'd have plenty to keep them busy. This acting job is about like anything else, I guess. There must be a certain amount of work to it. Anyway, about 7 o'clock, I was up in my room putting on a clean shirt, getting fixed up to go to the theater and watch their play. Hey, man. Hello, Britt. Oh, hello, Arch. Maggie. Oh, what's the matter? I'm just born under an unlucky star, I guess. Oh? It's my fault. I never should have suggested giving a performance tonight in the first place. Well, what, couldn't you get the opera house? No. No, it's, it's available. Well, Mr. Barnum's coming. He told me so himself. Oh, heaven forbid. Well, I, I thought you were so anxious for him to see you. That... Not just to see us, but to, to like us, to appreciate our talent. Oh. I'd only stop to think, Arch. Oh, don't blame you, my dear. Blame myself. Should have realized the whole idea of our playing tonight was out of the question. Now, now I've sent those kids all over town. Well, maybe we can catch an early train. Sneak away before anyone knows. Now, now, hold on there. Now, what, what are you both so down on the mouth about? Now, you got the theater, and you're going to have an audience, Mr. Barnum included. Well, that's just it, Brett, the audience. Huh? It'll be the same folks who came last night. Oh, I see. They boo us, make fun of us, probably start shooting again. And what will Mr. Barnum think? We're the worst actors he's ever seen. That's what he'll think. Yeah, but there ought to be some way of maintaining order. What about the sheriff? Hey, here's a man to do it. Already seen him. Yeah? Oh, what did he say? Said we ain't any better than we was last night. He's advising the boys in the audience not to aim at the ceiling. Is that so? Oh, one big opportunity, Britt. And it's ruined before we ever got started. 
well, maybe there won't be any trouble. Maybe the audience will like this, uh, what, what is Hamlet? Maybe they'll like that better than the one you gave them before. They won't. It, it isn't one of our most successful presentations. Uh-huh. You couldn't try something else, could you? We only do two plays, Britt. Fellow uh-huh. and Hamlet. I see. Well, uh, I guess it wouldn't be much point repeating that Othello. Huh? No, I wouldn't. Uh-huh. Well, I'm awful sorry, Arch. I wish there was something I could do. Do you, Brett? Do you really wish there was something you could do? Why, sure, Maggie, sure. Well, as a matter of fact, we did have one possible solution. So? It sort of involves you, in a way. What, me? You, you see, you, you're practically saving our lives, Brett, if you do it. Explain it to him, Arch. Well, maybe, uh, maybe you, you'd better do the explaining. Oh, no, no, it, it really was your idea, Arch. Go on, Arch. Well, you see, but now, 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 don't say no until you hear me out. Uh, well, I'm not saying anything. You see, uh, we were thinking most of the folks here in town must, well, they must know you by sight, and they know you're the six-shooter. So, it... <laughs> I said no. You can be darn sure of that. And I kept saying it over and over and over again for the next hour and a half. I, oh, what they were suggesting was just tall foolishness. That's all. I, I just had to turn them down. That's all. I just had to do it. And they must have known I wouldn't agree to a thing like that. But no matter how hard I talked, they just talked harder. And being actors, they had strong voices, too, you know. Well, the next thing I knew, somehow they'd managed to drag me along with them to the opera house. And... Anyhow, after the piano solo by Thelma Featherhill, the curtain went up and the show got underway. Started out all right, too. The audience seemed to be paying attention. Nobody was creating any ruckus or anything, at least not at first. Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt. That it should come to this. But two months dead. Oh, frailty, thy name is woman. Oh, fie on, oh, fie, fie, Yes, fie on you, too. <laughs> 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 there yet the soap of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes. She married. Sounds like old lady Crandall. She only waited two weeks after Jed Crandall kicked the pocket. <laughs> no, it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Better get a good grip on it, mister. <laughs> you see, Britt, you just gotta do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, look at poor Arch out there. Isn't it, well, isn't it just enough to break your heart? A weary tale. Flat and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Your acting's a little flat, too, mister. <laughs> Go on, Britt. That's your cue. What cue? What, what you Go mean? on, like oh. that. Oh, uh, good Horatio. I am glad to see you well. Hail to your lordship, Britt. Huh? Hail to your lordship. Oh, yeah. Hail to your lordship. What make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? How's that? But... A truant disposition. Uh, uh, a truant disposition. Pat, get to school, kids. Here comes the truant officer. <laughs> I will not hear your enemy say so. Nor shall you do my ear that violence to make it cutter of your own reports against you. No, he's bringing out the report card. <laughs> uh, Sid, Sid, you better take it easy. Huh? Don't you see who that is, that other actor fella? What are you talking about? It's Brick Ponce. Ponce, the six shooter? You must be crazy. He's staying at the hotel. I've seen him this afternoon. Well, what's he doing up there on that stage? He's a friend of them actors. Oh, if I was you, I'd keep my big mouth shut from here on in. That ain't no sword he's wearing under that rig. That's a six gun, plain as day. It's oh. hollowed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish for the marriage table. Would I have met my dearest foe in heaven, there I had seen him. Oh, woe is me. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince. Sweet, uh... 
and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Uh, rest. And flocks of angels sing you to your rest. We can't ever thank you enough. Why, if it hadn't been for you, I just don't know what would have ever happened. Oh, golly. <laughs> and did you see? He stayed through to the end. Mr. Barnum did. Right through to the end. Britt. Britt, you were great. Arch, I never felt so foolish in my whole life. Do you think he'll come backstage, Arch? Uh, Mr. Barnum? Somebody help me get out of this thing, will you? Come in. Why, Mr. Barnum? Good evening. I just wanted to drop by and tell you how much I enjoyed your performance tonight. We are most honored, sir. Honored! Your future in the theater is assured. And uh, you there, Ponson. Who, me? You told me you weren't an actor. Oh, he was just sort of filling in, Mr. Barnum. Oh, I realize you weren't up in the part, Mr. Ponson. But such stage presence. Why, the way that audience quieted down when you walked on, I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Never. Now, if you're seriously interested in the theater as a career, I would be very happy... No, 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 no. No, no, no. Thanks very much, Mr. Barnum. I, I'm uh, not interested. No, that's, that's real kind of you, but uh, no, thank Oh, oh, no. Well, sir, I got out of that theater just as fast as my legs could carry me. Gee, I, I just don't see how anybody can set out to be an actor. All those people staring at you and that, that sweat running down the back of your neck. Holy smoke. And worse than any gunfight, I'm sure. Of course, that applause, that's after it was over, that, that, that applause, that, that did sound kind of good. And Mr. Barnum, he, he was very nice about saying that I had stage presence, whatever that means. Uh, I, I suppose a man could get used to play acting if he had to. It sure is a scary business. Uh. Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt, and the transcribed story is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Michael Ann Barrett, Tony Barrett, Ted Bliss, Marvin Miller, and Dan O'Herlihy. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. This is Hal Gibney speaking.